I've had a saying on the channel for a long time now that what gets made easy gets done. That's why when it comes to jailbreaking your PlayStation 2, finding the easiest way possible but still getting maximum results is the way to go. That is where this comes in. This Keiko Labs free McBoot card has everything you need pre-installed on the card for a plug and play solution to jailbreak your PS2. This isn't a sponsored video and Keiko Labs didn't send this to me. I bought it out of pocket from Amazon. I've been using cards like this with PlayStation 2s on the channel for the last couple of years and every time they've been a top performer and that's why I wanted to share this with you. This new packaging for 2024 complies with stricter regulations from the European Union and has an overall reduced carbon footprint, which is better for the planet. Here's what comes inside the package. You get an 8 megabyte card compatible with the PlayStation 2 memory card system. You also get a QR code so that you can download a digital copy of the manual. Just like the packaging states, this is a plug and play setup. Insert the memory card into an open slot on your PlayStation Fat or Slim system, then press the power button to turn on your PlayStation 2. A quick note here, as mentioned on Google, the 90,000 model numbers for the PlayStation 2 Slims are not compatible with free McBoot. But since all the rest of them are, it's really awesome. When your PS2 starts up, rather than the PlayStation 2 logo, you'll see the free McBoot logo. And then you'll be taken to the main menu of free McBoot. Your PS2 is now running custom system software and is jailbroken, but there's a lot to unpack here. For starters, just like with the official system software, the first menu listing is called Browser. That's going to give you access to the content that's stored on your memory card. In this case, since this memory card now has your system software on it, I'd recommend that you not make alterations to the card from this and instead use a second memory card for save game backups. The second menu listing here is called System Configuration and it's exactly the same thing that's on your stock system software. This is where you can make adjustments to things like the date and time on your system, choose your system's aspect ratio, the use of digital optical audio out, choose your video connection type, and system language. Here's the first of the homebrew applications on the memory card. You launch ELF. You launch ELF gives you access to storage locations like your memory card, USB drives, and your hard drive to launch homebrew applications. Those applications have .elf extensions, which is why the software is called You Launch ELF. The next piece of homebrew software is really the reason most people want to jailbreak a PS2 in the first place. You see, the Open PS2 Loader, or OPL for short, lets you load backups of your favorite PlayStation 2 games from sources like USB drives or an internal hard drive. I have a USB drive inserted with some PlayStation 2 backups already on it, so I'm going to change the storage location from hard drive to USB and presto. Just like that, you can play backups of your favorite PlayStation 2 games in no time at all. The HD Loader application does exactly what it sounds like it would do. It lets you load backed up PS2 games from an internal hard drive on a PlayStation 2 FAT model. There's no hard drive installed in this specific PS2 FAT model yet, but by the end of the video, I'll show you a way that you can get this done for your own system. Remember how I said at the beginning of the video that what gets made easy gets done? Simple Media System is a great way to be able to play some of your favorite backed up video and audio content. For example, I was able to play MP3 backups of Daft Punk's Random Access Memories album and a video file with an AVI extension from V the Mini series from the 1980s. The launch disk ESR software is designed to allow you to boot burned DVDs on your PlayStation 2 system. While you can absolutely go this route, I think using something like OPL or HD Loader is a better solution. If you don't believe in the no-win scenario, and you want to do like Captain Kirk and change the conditions of the Kobayashi Maru test, Codebreaker is for you. You'll get access to over 150,000 codes across the PlayStation 2 game library. Oh, they might refer to them as cheats in the menu, but I like to refer to them as codes. Hey, you know me, no judgments here. Next up on the list, USB Advance. It's designed to let you plug in USB hard drives and other USB devices into your PlayStation 2 to launch backups of your favorite PS2 content. Options like OPL are more often updated and probably a better choice in 2024. But if you want to use USB Advance, it's still an option. GSM is designed to let you pick from a series of pre-selected resolutions and frame rates for your PlayStation 2. If you don't have access to an upscaler, this can be an option for you. For this video, I'm using a RetroTINK 5X Pro fed directly into a more 4K for full 4K upscaling of the PS2. So Free McBoot has a configurator, or configurator, however you want to pronounce it, to change the settings inside Free McBoot to your liking. One of the key purposes behind the configuration software is to change the menu items on the main menu of Free McBoot. But you can also make changes to other key settings here and save that configuration to the memory card. 
But perhaps the most compelling value about the Kaiko Labs Freemate boot card is the price. It's only 15 US dollars on Amazon, and it includes free shipping for Prime members. I have it linked in the video description so you can pick up one for your own PlayStation 2 system. Now that you know how to jailbreak your PlayStation 2, why not learn how to install a hard drive in it and start playing backups of your favorite PS2 games? This video, shown on screen and linked in the description and pinned comment, will show you how it's done. I'll see you over there.